Glory to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, at verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Brothers and sisters, we are reminded that the devil is a liar, and he is the most dangerous kind of a liar, because he twists the truth in a very subtle manner. We go back in the beginning, in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17, when Adam received commandments from the Lord. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And so God gave a clear commandment to Adam, and as we all know, Eve was beguiled by the serpent because the serpent asked a question which challenged the veracity of what God had expressed. We are still in the book of Genesis now at chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And so you see, brothers and sisters, going back to the top in verse 1 of chapter 3, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The devil is bringing Eve to reconsider the veracity, the authenticity, and the truth that was expressed by God. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of, of preachers today, supposedly of the Lord, are twisting the scriptures with exactly the same scheme. They use the same formula where the scriptures are establishing a fact. Satan will come and he will take the same claim that God makes and add a question mark after it. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? But what did God say? God said previously to Adam, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And immediately after, in chapter 3, the devil asks, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And so as I was saying, the devil will take a claim made by God and ask a question he will add a question mark to a statement made by the Lord. And therefore, we see today preachers who are supposedly of the Lord again take facts that pertain to the gospel and they add a question mark afterwards because they're hoping to sway, they're hoping to deceive those who do not have a solid foundation in the word. They are looking to cause to err those who open their ears to hear a different gospel. We go to the general epistle of Jude. 
We are at verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you have men who come in unawares and they try to pervert the gospel, they try to distort it, but we must stand firm in the beliefs that we have which are rooted in the doctrine of the apostles, which are rooted in the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Indeed, brothers and sisters, in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, we go to verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And so we learn here that there is but one gospel, but there are people who would want to make you believe that there is a different gospel and that by believing the true gospel, you would be in error and they would want to lure you into believing into a fictional gospel that they have made up themselves. But what does Paul say? Verse eight, but though we, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And so I say these things to remind us that there is such a thing as a lying spirit and it's the spirit of the devil. And the spirit of the devil speaks no truth. And so therefore, in Genesis chapter 3, when the devil, the serpent, asks, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. He's looking to challenge the faith that you have in the words of God, where he would have you move from the steadfastness that you have in these words. Where you would have been given a clear commandment by the Lord to actually eat of every tree of the garden freely, but one, which would bring about death. And this is why in Galatians chapter one, Paul marvels that after hearing the gospel, after having acquired knowledge pertaining to the true gospel and the only gospel, some yet manage to be carried away and to believe in a different gospel. Whereas Paul reminds us that if anybody comes with a different gospel, they ought to be accursed. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And so although in this chapter, Paul is talking about the law and grace, how people must be saved by grace through faith with the power of the Holy Spirit, rather than the law, the righteousness of men, although this chapter is dealing with that specific topic, it still remains pertinent, relevant, to see that Paul is asking, who hath bewitched you? In other words, who has carried you away from the understanding that you had of the gospel concerning a certain point? Who hath bewitched you? Who has spoken a lie to you that you would have believed it? Who hath put a question mark after facts that were stated to you as being part of the true and pure gospel that you would then now consider re-evaluating what you have come to know for certain because someone has decided to ask a question mark 
after a fact that was stated. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we have to be vigilant. And as Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 reads, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You have to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Indeed, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, we read, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so when the Bible teaches you that you must be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, it also means and implies that you must not be ignorant of his devices. And the pillar, the foundation of his devices is falsehood, lies. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And so the devil specializes in deception by way of lying. So now that we have established this foundation, brothers and sisters, let us take a claim. Let us look at what the Lord teaches us in his word concerning his gospel. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. This is Paul speaking. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. The preaching of Paul was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. The preaching of Paul was in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why is that? So that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but that it be rooted rather in the power of God. Amen. And so the gospel that we have received is one that contains an expression of power which can be demonstrated. Alleluia. Still in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And so, brothers and sisters, these verses are very clear that there is a power that can be manifested and should be manifested where the Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit of God, is present. And normally this should come as no surprise to you because the scriptures establish that in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Ye shall receive power. When? After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And so the Holy Ghost, when you receive it, you also receive power. And so clear claims are made by the Lord in his word, which are expressed through holy man who wrote the scriptures, as we know, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. We had spoken about 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. The preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. So that ultimately our faith is rooted in the power of God and does not stand in the wisdom of man. 
We spoke of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20, where Paul says he will not know the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power, because the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. This is why the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 20, he said, But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. In other words, the manifestation of the power that is associated with the kingdom of God, it is manifested unto you as I cast out devils by the finger of God. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching them that if they're seeing miracles, if they're seeing a demonstration of power, then certainly that power being, of course, rooted in the power of God, then certainly they are being witnesses to the power of the kingdom being displayed right before their eyes. And so here, although this is talking about casting out devils specifically, you can understand this as meaning when you have demonstrations of power in general, whichever demonstration of power you can see and be a witness to, so long as this power is rooted in the Holy Spirit and operated by the Holy Spirit, then are you being a witness to the manifestation of the power of the kingdom of God. And here specifically, Jesus is pointing them to the fact that he cast out devils by the finger of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 13, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, into Galilee, in the power of the Spirit. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Verse 15, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And so you can clearly see that there is a power associated with the Holy Spirit, of which the Lord Jesus Christ himself makes mention. And in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, we had previously read that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So now, getting back to the top, what will the devil do in order to deceive believers, the saints, that they have indeed received power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon them? The devil is going to do what he did in the beginning because there is nothing new under the sun. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 9, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Genesis, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And so sure enough, the devil who is a liar, who speaketh a lie of himself because there is no truth in him, he adds a question mark after a clear statement in order to bring you to reconsider the pillars of your faith. And here, in that context of Genesis, to reconsider the commandment that was given to Adam, he wants Eve to reconsider it. So now, in context, when we go to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What do you think the devil is going to say? Have you received power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you? And so the devil will challenge that you have ever received any type of power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The devil does not want you to consider that as was the case for those who were sent out with power, though they did not yet have the Holy Spirit, that you also have received power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you the way they did when the Lord Jesus Christ sent out disciples. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Now the spirits are subject unto you, meaning you have authority over those spirits of the kingdom of darkness. And so obviously Satan does not want you to be aware of that. And therefore he will make a claim that the statement that you have received concerning which you have received power, he will challenge you and he will put a question mark behind it. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Have ye received power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you? Can Christians cast out devils? Can Christians hear from the Lord? Can Christians pray for someone and see them healed? Can Christians receive a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom? As a Christian, should I be afraid of witches and warlocks? And so all these questions that you hear are coming from people who have accepted the devil's lie that they should add a question mark after that they were told, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And if you accept that, that you challenge your own beliefs concerning things that may be more trivial, how is it that you are going to think that you can do that which is more quote unquote extraordinary? Because in the Gospel of Matthew, brothers and sisters, we are told in chapter 10, verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Brothers and sisters, if they were given the ability to raise the dead, if they were given that power, and now we have received the Holy Ghost with power, I am not going to limit myself. I do believe that I have power to raise the dead, or rather, that the Lord can operate the power of raising the dead through me as a useless servant. And I believe it. I have no doubt about it. And so therefore, it is about receiving what the Lord has told you and not rather falling into the trap of the devil who will readily add a question mark at the end of every statement so that you don't get to a point where you say, I'm not going to believe that we can raise the dead unless I see it. Or can I pray for someone and see a leper cleansed? Can I heal the sick by prayer? Can the Lord do that through me as a vessel being used for his honor? And this is what we are fighting today. And getting back to what we were saying originally, do you believe what Paul believes in that you should not put your trust in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power? Do you agree with Paul that your faith should stand in the power of God and not in the wisdom of man? Do you receive it? Do you acknowledge it? Do you further believe that you are not to be consumed with the speech of them that are puffed up, but rather that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Have you received that? Do you believe it? Because today we are seeing in these end times that there are many who rise up and claim to be prophets and claim to be preachers and claim to be teachers. And what they do is contradict the very essence of that which we have received. And they use the same method that was used in the beginning to deceive. They put question marks after statements that are made by the Bible without ambiguity. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Shall ye receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you? Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, hath God said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you? O oh, foolish Galatians, 
who hath bewitched you. We should not be ignorant of his devices, the enemy, Satan, because he is a liar from the beginning, the father of it. And we must not be removed from the gospel that we have received. And if anybody comes with another gospel, which is not another, let him be accursed. Because we put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that we be not carried away by false teaching. Because as we're told in Jude, we must earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, and not be deceived by certain men crept in unawares, who deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, by also denying his power. And so we believe what the scriptures tell us, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. We believe that just like the disciples were given power by the Lord, now that we even have the Holy Spirit that they didn't have, we can do what they were able to do. And we can exercise the power and authority that they exercised as they were given it by the Lord and he gives it to us likewise when we have his Holy Spirit. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, so that we can also likewise operate in the power of the Spirit like our Master, so that we can likewise, by the finger of God, work signs and miracles, so that we can undoubtedly manifest the power of the kingdom of God for the eyes of those who are watching, onlookers. Because there are many people, brothers and sisters, who are waiting to see those signs so that they can come to believe. The Lord does nothing in vain. If there are signs and miracles that can be operated, it is for a purpose. And the Lord's purpose is that the people are drawn in, is that the people come to believe on him. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 21, Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. If they had seen these mighty works, if these mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, so that they would have seen them, then they would have repented. They would have believed. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 45, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. And so seeing, my friend, is important for some, and therefore the signs and wonders are necessary. And further, we must have faith that we can do these things because we have been promised that we would receive power once the Holy Ghost would have come upon us, so that we likewise can heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. And this even if the devil would try to add a question mark after such statements. Amen. Now, how important are these signs and wonders? In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22, Yea, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. How? by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. We have several elements here, brothers and sisters, that are very important. Hear these words, receive them, believe them, and let not anyone distort them because they are truth and not lie. Jesus of Nazareth, 
That is he of whom we spoke in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, saying that he returned from the wilderness where he was tempted. He returned and operated in the power of the Spirit, Jesus of Nazareth. And he was approved of God. There was a seal set upon him. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Gospel of Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. And so approved of God. Where? Among you. Among you so that you could see. Come and see. How was he approved? By miracles and wonders and signs. Is it a new thing that God would rely on signs? Not at all because we saw that there is no new thing under the sun. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. God used signs from the beginning. And so we were saying back at the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22, that the way in which Jesus of Nazareth was approved of God among the people was by miracles, wonders, and signs. And this operates through the power of the Holy Spirit, which God did by him. And so he was used as a vessel through which the power was expressed and manifested. We had seen in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11, verse 20, how he said himself, if I with the finger of God, that is by the power of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. The manifestation of the power of the Spirit, because he was operating in the power of the Spirit. And so signs which God did by him. Where again? In the midst of you. We had said earlier, among you. Now in the midst of you, why? For you to see it. As ye yourselves also know. And so we see in Acts chapter two, verse 22, that the people are called to hear these words, to receive them, that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, where among you, how? By miracles and wonders and signs. And so the power of the Spirit was a way to seal, was a way to confirm, to authenticate, to certify the authenticity of the gospel that he was preaching. And so signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. And this is why we likewise, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, and we are told, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Is there a question mark here? There is none. And so again, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22, Jesus of Nazareth was approved of God by miracles, by wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of the people. This is why in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, we are told to go into all the world to preach the gospel. 
and that likewise signs will accompany us and it will be a confirmation it will be certification it will be validation that the gospel that we are preaching is authentic now some may say that the gospel of mark chapter 16 that there is an added section to it those last few verses let us find the same content in the bible elsewhere we are in the book of hebrews chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him how was it confirmed unto us by them that heard him verse 4 god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. And so we learn that signs and wonders, diverse miracles, were used by God to bear witness to those who saw and heard the Lord. And these people, they are the ones who confirmed unto us what God had spoken to them at the first. And so they confirmed to us the gospel that they had received by being used by God to work signs and wonders. And it was a way for God to bear them witness that they were speaking truth about the gospel that they had received. And so we end up with the same dynamic, the same end result that signs and wonders are used to confirm the gospel. And Jesus Christ himself was approved of God this way. And we should likewise. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 40, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And so now, brothers and sisters, we get to the crux of things by looking at the ministry of Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach, and how he operated in the power of the Spirit that we may have a better understanding of how we ourselves are supposed to operate in the power of the Spirit. And where you would have someone asking the question, do Christians have power? Where well, here's the answer. The answer is we do not need a question mark at the end of that statement, but rather we should accept what the Bible declares to be the truth. So let us look at the master. There is no better example. We are looking at the demonstration of the power of the gospel and that it should not be questioned. There should not be a possibility that you would be carried away from the pillars and foundation of the gospel that you have received and that your faith be shaken so that you would not remain steadfast in it concerning what the gospel says, what the Bible says about signs and wonders and the power that you have received with the Holy Spirit after that he has come upon you. We are looking at our perfect example, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Let us consider the preaching of Yoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Gospel of Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. Verse 23, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. Verse 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? 
Isn't this, brothers and sisters, what we see today? When a devil is cast out, what thing is this? And so I continue at verse 27. What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Verse 28, and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And so even though we have the scriptures today, where we are told that we will receive power, that the casting out of devils is a possibility, yet do we have some who claim, who state, who raise the question, do we have power with the Holy Spirit? Do we have power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us. Yet it is plainly laid out in scripture, the type of power that we receive and how it will manifest. Now again, if not by the specific act of casting out devils, there is power that we have received manifested in some shape or form according to the powers that are given to us after that the Spirit has come upon us. But there should be something, some manifestation of power but we cannot be powerless. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 38 and 39, And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. He preached. And so I finish reading the verse, And cast out devils. So where someone would tell you that the preaching of the gospel suffices, the Bible tells you otherwise. The Bible tells you that the preaching of the gospel can be accompanied by the working of a miracle. The preaching of the gospel can be accompanied by casting out devils. And so anybody who tells you that deliverance is superfluous and that we do not need deliverance is contradicting the Lord himself who preached and no one can preach better than he preached and yet after that he was done preaching comma and cast out devils and so this is again a ploy from the devil to tell you that the preaching suffices and that it should never be accompanied by the casting out of devils it should never be accompanied by signs but what does the Bible tell you plainly here that you will not receive it? The Lord himself preached and cast out devils. The preaching accompanied by the working of a sign, of a miracle, of a wonder. And this is a pattern that if you read carefully, you will observe in the coming scriptures as well, still in the Gospel of Mark. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. Verse 2. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. What did he do? He preached. What happens next? Still in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verse 11, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Verse 12, And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. So they saw so that the Lord could be approved by God by way of signs, wonders, and miracles worked by him. But most importantly here, my point is this. He preached the gospel to them. This is what we saw at the beginning of this chapter. And this is the story of the man born of four, the lame man. So at first there was a preaching of the word. And after that, there is a working of a miracle, a healing, and this for a purpose. They were amazed and they glorified God, saying we never saw it on this fashion, signs. 
And so the preaching was accompanied by a miracle. We move forward still in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. But the preaching doesn't abide alone, verse 15, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Now we see that the model is after the model established by the Lord himself when he healed the lame man. He preached, and then there was a miracle. He ordains 12, and then he sends them forth to preach so that they can have power to work wonders, signs, and miracles. And so the preaching is accompanied again by the working of signs, wonders, and miracles. And so I repeat myself, anybody telling you that the preaching suffices is contradicting the Bible because the Lord himself had the preaching accompanied by signs. Is it to say that without a sign, the preaching is not going to be sufficient? That is not what I'm saying. I am rather saying that you cannot say that preaching alone is a standard, a must, and that you cannot add miracles, signs, and wonders unto it, and that they would be superfluous because the Lord made it so that in certain circumstances, signs, wonders, and miracles were accompanying, accompanied the preaching. And so you cannot say as an absolute rule that preaching can stand alone. It can in some instances. In other instances, we're seeing that the preaching is accompanied by signs, miracles, and wonders. And so it is anti-biblical, anti-scriptural, to make it a rule that the preaching suffices and that the deliverance of a person or that the working of a sign and miracle or a wonder is theater and entertainment. The Lord actually turned to such things to confirm the authenticity of the gospel that was preached. And so we are seeing this pattern of the preaching being accompanied by the working of signs, miracles, and wonders remembering that Jesus Christ was approved of God through signs, wonders, and miracles that God worked by him, as we saw both in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 22 and in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4. We now move forward to the gospel of Mark chapter 6 verses 12 and 13. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And so they preached the gospel. And at verse 13, and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Again, you see the coupling of the preaching. They preached that man should repent. Was it deemed to be sufficient in that case? And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. The working of signs, wonders, and miracles. And therefore, brothers and sisters, with these examples in the Gospel of Mark, I wanted to show to you that Signs, wonders, and miracles accompany the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, receive them. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. And so God confirms 
the authenticity of the gospel preached by his servants by using them to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. And Jesus himself, our perfect example, Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, it was the same for him. And so for someone to say, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you? This person, adding a question mark after clear statements, clear verses that teach us about our gospel and how it is in the demonstration of the power, this person is doing the devil's work to question that which the Bible establishes. And so we will end this Bible study this way. I want to remind you that if you have received the Holy Spirit, you have received power. The Holy Spirit operates in power. And if there are people who want to remove you from your place of steadfastness about your faith, if there are people who want to add question marks to that which the Bible declares without ambiguity, if you accept that someone diminish your status as a saint by way of making you believe that you have no power over the power of darkness, then you are falling into the devil's trap to relinquish that power at his feet where you have been given authority to exercise it over the devil and his kingdom, obviously within the limits of what the Father will allow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 12, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And so, brothers and sisters, we have seen that the devil is a liar from the beginning. There are wiles of the devil that we should not be ignorant of. We must not be ignorant of his devices because he will take the truth that God gives us and he will try to get us to question it. He will add question marks. But we must hold on to the gospel that has been given to us and not believe another gospel, but rather let anyone who comes with a different gospel where there is none different because there is only one true gospel, but anybody who would claim to preach a different gospel, they should be accursed. Because the Lord Jesus Christ himself was confirmed by God, approved by God, through signs, wonders, and miracles operated through him by God himself. And he was approved that way, performing such signs, wonders, and miracles among the people that they could see. And another example for those of you who want to go look at it is in John chapter 12. And I will leave this as something that you can go and look up for yourself. In John chapter 12, verses 9 to 11, you're going to see another example of why signs, miracles, and wonders are important to bring certain souls to the kingdom. And lastly, I have up here on the screen 1 John chapter 1 for the following reason. Verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. 
Brothers and sisters, it is important to remember that the people who wrote the Holy Scriptures under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they spoke of things they had seen and heard. And this reminds us that we have to be boots on the ground and also make up our own experiences with the gospel so that we can speak about these experiences boldly and having knowledge of what we are talking about. And so as I have spoken these words to you, I have myself experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in many ways. This is why I cannot be duped into thinking that we do not receive power with the Holy Spirit, because I have experienced it myself, having gone forth to preach the gospel, having gone forth to spread the good news, obeying the commandment of the Lord to do so. And in doing that, the Lord who watches over his word to fulfill it was accompanying me. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, he worked signs, wonders, and miracles through me to confirm the gospel that I was preaching. And therefore, after that I have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, in terms of receiving words of wisdom, words of knowledge, in terms of discerning spirits, in terms of casting out devils, in terms of praying for the sick and seeing healings, how then is someone going to come and tell me with man's wisdom that we do not have power with the Holy Spirit, but rather that the preaching of the gospel is what we should limit ourselves to and consider that anything added unto the preaching of the gospel is theater and mockery of the word. Brothers and sisters, read the scriptures for what they say and accept them. Because if you rely on man's wisdom, you are going to be deceived and led astray by way of a tactic of a strategy that was used even from the beginning. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, have ye received power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you? May you be blessed, brothers and sisters. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Alleluia. Amen.